Ladies and gentlemen, hi, good evening. Hi, I'm Steve Bragstone. I work with PAVE, Project Against Violent Encounters. And uh, just want to take just a minute to let you know what's going on. First of all, this How to uh, Stop Bullying and Social Aggression presentation is sponsored by Kim at, Will at uh, Applegate, Tracy at Willowbrook, Donna McKenzie here, the principal at Molly Stark, and again, Project Against Violent Encounters. And just to let you know, Project Against Violent Encounters, also known as PAVE, serves victims of domestic violence and sexual assault. So they work in a couple of different capacities to help people who are victims, or also hopefully preventative. So if people feel, feel that they're in uh, danger in any type of relationship, it could be boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, intimate partner relationships, they are there to help. They have a hotline, they're there to help. The other side of PAVE is also what we call prevention. I'm the youth educator. The idea is to hopefully stop people from, well, bullying when you're a kid, dating violence, domestic violence as you get older. It's a big issue about power and control. And the idea is, can we stop it before it even happens? With the way I work at it as a, uh, as a specialist in violence prevention, is I like to work at three different points. How do we stop people who are aggressive from being aggressive? How to help people who are targets or victims of aggression and bullying? And what to do and what we can tell bystanders if they see or they know about it. Because when it comes to bullying, and I'll focus on bullying, we have the three legs of the stool, the bully, the targets, and the bystanders. It's a very complex subject. You've all heard lots of things about it over the years. But what I like to focus on is solutions. So having said that, I'm going to jump right into it and talk about what bullying is for just a little while, because it's very important that students, parents, and uh, also teachers and staff members are on the same page of what bullying is. Bullying is, let me put this down, when you have somebody or even a group of people that have a certain type of power. So in a sense, if power is up here, and they go after people who have less power, okay? They're taking advantage. They're abusing somebody with less power, all right? The power could be physical power. It could be age. I'm, I'm in fifth grade, and I'm going to pick on someone who's in second grade. Or maybe I weigh 200 pounds, and you only weigh 100 pounds. This is not fair, all right? This is unacceptable. This is bullying. Or maybe physically we're about the same, but I got lots of friends, and you're new to the school. So the power is, I have lots of friends, and you're new, and there's a power difference. That's what bullying is. But it's not two kids who just get into a fight. If I, what's your name, sir? I'm going to use you, but you decided to sit in front. Scott. Scott. OK, do you mind if I use you as a, as a volunteer? OK, I'm volunteering you to volunteer, if that's OK. All right. So if Scott and I were just, let's say, we didn't like each other for whatever reason, and I called Scott stupid, and he called me a moron. I said, you're an idiot, and he called me fat, and I called him ugly. And he said, my mother's stupid, and your father's blah, blah, blah. And we're just going at it. That's not bullying. Because I'm not intimidating him. There's an equality. It's inappropriate and misbehavior that needs to be addressed by authority, but that's not bullying. If I said, come on, sucker, you want to fight? And he looks up at me and says, yeah, bring it on, Steve. I'll fight you. Once again. We have a problem, but that's not bullying. If I say, I'm going to kick your butt after school, and he's like, holy cow. He knows I'm strong. He knows that I know how to fight. Maybe he's never gotten into a fight in his life. I got lots of friends. He doesn't have any. Now he's afraid to come to school. He can't focus on his homework. He's not eating. He's not sleeping. He's having nightmares. Now we have bullying. There's that difference in power. So again, just because I say something mean to Scott, or anybody else doesn't mean I'm bullying. Because sometimes what happens is I want to be a bully. I want to pick on this kid right over here. But I think she's just going to cower and be scared. And she's going to cry. And I'm going to be like, yeah, I made her cry. Yeah. And I make all my friends laugh. That's great. Then I bullied her. But if I say I'm going to make her cry, and she says, Steve, you're an idiot. Shut up. <laughs> and that wasn't the reaction I was expecting at all. Then I tried to bully her but it didn't work. And once again, hopefully, if there's somebody in authority, I don't care if it's a parent, a teacher, a principal, a bus driver, 
hopefully someone's going to address the inappropriate behavior that I've expressed. OK. Now, just so we know, the idea is getting everybody on the same page. Who do these nasty, rude bullies pick on? Generally, I'm going to try to pick on somebody who I think is not going to stand up to me. For instance, it might be someone who's passive or submissive. And when you think about it, it's kind of the quiet kids, the nervous kids, the kids that may not have self-esteem or they don't have a lot of friends. And when they get picked on, they may cry or they may kind of be like a turtle and go in their little shell. Because if I'm a bully, I like power and control. I enjoy that. And if I make somebody cry, I feel good. Or at least I've accomplished my goal. So I'm going to go after someone who I don't think is going to pick out, uh, is going to stand up to me. That might be someone who's passive. Maybe they don't have a lot of skills. Maybe they're not very popular. But then there's somebody else that sometimes I like to pick on. And that's called the provocative victim. Every once in a while, I bully this kid over here. Not because he doesn't have good self-esteem, but because he's weird. He does those weird things. Sometimes he's got snot coming out of his nose, and he doesn't blow his nose, and everybody knows it, so he's easy to pick on. All right? He does some strange behaviors. He acts weird, and I can make fun of him. And when I make fun of him, it's not like he cowers, but he just gets so, oh, stop it already, Steve. Would you cut it out? I hate when you bully me. And I'm like, wow, I now get entertained. I could drive him crazy. I could see him turn red. Maybe he'll cry. Maybe he'll want to fight. And when he fights, he does things like this, like a funny dance. And I'm like, I'm getting all my friends to laugh. Because you have to understand that what I might do is, I don't want to just bully him where nobody sees. If I want to drive him crazy and see him turn red, I'm going to do it in front of my friends, and they're all going to laugh. In fact, if I do it right, they're going to see me as Mr. Funny Guy. I don't even think of myself as a bully. I just think of myself as popular. And in fact, I could become real popular. Let's say we're in a classroom, and the teacher is boring us, all right? Or I don't even want to listen to the lesson. It's math or history, and it's so boring. I don't want to be here, OK? Well, we got a test coming up. I know that if I do little spitballs in the back of Scott's head, or maybe I'm in the back of his, him, you know, maybe I'm sitting behind him and I just do this, and I just do this, and I just do this on his head. Sooner or later he's going to turn around and he's going to go, Stop it, Steve! Cut it out already! Why are you, why are you doing that to me? Now what's going to happen? I didn't do anything. I was so quiet. I was just playing with his hair. He's the one who's yelling and screaming. So who is the teacher going to address? Scott! Scott, what's going on? Why are you yelling? Why are you screaming? Now we get into it. Oh, Steve's been picking on me. Teacher is trying to figure out what's going on, what happened. I didn't see anything. Before you know it, 20 minutes went by. Didn't have a math lesson. Didn't have to be bored with history. We got entertained by all this bullying. So bullying is very, very complex. So what types of bullying are there? Well, when people hear about bullying, they often think about that type of bully who's the big guy, the knuckle dragger, wants to beat somebody up, OK? Give me your milk money. I'm going to beat you up after school, OK? I'm going to give you that wedgie and pull your, your underwear up over your head, OK? I'm going to stick you in the locker. <laughs> I'm going to give you a swirly. Anybody who doesn't know what a swirly is, stick your head down in the toilet and flush. OK, and get all my friends to help. Oh, maybe I'm the lead bully. But you know what? They're kind of bullying, too, because they're kind of helping me even just by encouraging me. Well, here's the thing about that. Physical bullying is what you usually think about. That's what you see on TV a lot. But the thing is, it's the least common type of bullying. All right? It happens. But generally speaking, there's not that many fights. There's no swirlies. Most kids can't even fit into a locker if you go into middle school or high school. But if you watch TV, you can fit in. Is that what you said? Not, not me, but I have a few friends who could. Yeah, yeah. I have friends who, who have crawled into lockers and locked themselves in on purpose just to get out of class. They locked themselves in <laughs> to get out of class. However, what school are you in? Um, are you in the middle school? school? You are in the middle school. Okay. I, I know midgets. Well, not really midgets. They're my friends. Short people. 
Small Tell people. Right, they've asked. Well, if you ask to be put in a locker, that's a whole different issue. All right, but generally speaking, it doesn't happen. And I'll tell you one reason it doesn't. One reason is that if kids get into a fight, or they really hurt somebody, or they break somebody's things, generally any adult is going to know I have to come over. If I'm doing this to Scott, and there's a whole bunch, and you're helping me beat him up, or at least threaten him, that teacher over there, even if she's not very well trained, She's going to know to come over and say, we can't have that. Most kids know that. Most kids know that if you get into a big fight, they're going to get in trouble. So generally speaking, while physical bullying absolutely happens, it's less common than verbal. Verbal is anybody could do verbal. I could do it so quietly. I could tear this guy down. The teacher could be 20 feet away and not realizing it. Because if I do it right, and I got all my friends here, and I'm picking on Scott, you know, I should pick on somebody else. What's your name? Colleen. Colleen, can I pick on you a little bit? Good, because I don't want to give him a <laughs> complex by the time he leaves tonight. All right, and I just give her the zingers and the insults and the put downs. Now I'm going to hurt you here, okay? Okay, verbally. What are you doing here? Nobody likes you. Why do you come to school? If you move, nobody cares. If you were never born, your parents probably would have been happier. My goodness, you're so stupid, you would trip on a cordless phone. Oh my goodness, I can't believe it. Hey, you want to lose weight? I know how you can lose 10 pounds. Just cut off your head. <laughs> okay, boom, boom, boom. Now, why did I pick on Colleen and say these hurtful things? Because I knew that Colleen was not very good at coming back with the insults. Usually, again, remember that passive target, that passive victim? It's usually something like, well, oh yeah, Steve, well, you're stupid too. Oh, good one, Colleen. You know what? Now she looks even more foolish. But it's those verbal put-downs that just kind of grate on you. And I don't want to go to school, and I don't, nobody likes me, and everybody hates me, and I feel bad, and I cry. And I could do that to people, and the teachers over there would never know. In fact, if I do it right, if I say those insults to somebody, and I get my friends over here to laugh, that teacher over there, all she might see, or he might see, is a bunch of kids laughing. She might be over there and say, oh, isn't it good? They're all having a, a good, funny conversation, not realizing that there's one person who is the butt of all these jokes. Okay. Now, the fact that she's not good at insulting me back, that's not a character flaw. I'm really kind of glad that your parents did not raise you to be mean to people. So the fact that I'm mean to you and you're not very good at insulting me back, that's not really a bad thing on your part. By the way, you know what gets very confusing? And we've all been there. We've all watched sitcoms over the years. But if you watch a lot of sitcoms, there's a lot of insulting behavior on television. I like sitcoms. But if this was a sitcom and I was saying those things to you that I just said, there might be a laugh track that turns up the laugh track and you hear lots and lots of laughter. Oh, there might have been a real audience there that just went, ha, ha, ha. But there's somebody like the director or the producer that makes it seem like the audience was hysterical. <laughs> that was the funniest insult ever. And the person who's insulted is just like, oh, like it's no big deal. But that's TV. It's not real life. In real life, she really was hurt. Now you might say, but wait a second, Steve. Sometimes these insults are funny. I mean, come on, can't you take a joke? She's so sensitive. Oh, Steve, you're old. You don't understand. This is the way kids talk to each other, right? You hear this all the time. I was just teasing. I'm just kidding around. Okay, I didn't mean anything. You know I didn't mean anything by it, you stupid jerk. Okay, you know I was just kidding, idiot. Okay, wait a second. What, what, what? After a while, if I do it right, she thinks it's her fault that she's insulted instead of the fact that it's me who's actually so hurtful. So what we need to do, young people, older people, okay, is to help everybody understand what the difference is between teasing and taunting. Teasing, and it's the word I use, you can come up with your own word, but there's a concept. If I'm really teasing Colleen, basically what's happening is that I could say some insults to her, she could say insults to me. I say something about her glasses, she says something about my nose, we both laugh, and then we go play basketball. Okay? It's only a small 
part of the relationship. I'm not really trying to hurt her feelings. I'm just, I really am just kidding around. And I know she's not insulted because we've talked about her glasses. She doesn't care. All right? It's clever. It's harmless. And, if she's, and we're both laughing. And if Colleen said to me, Steve, do me a favor. It's enough about the glasses. Don't say anything about the glasses. Stop saying things about my mother. Don't make fun of my backside or whatever. If I'm really teasing and I'm really a friend, I actually stop. Then you know I'm kidding. Now, as a kid, even as an adult, sometimes we make a mistake. I might have said something about Adam's Pokemon. Adam, right? right? Yeah. I might have said something about his Pokemon shirt. Okay, And I didn't mean to insult you. I was really trying to be funny because I like Adam. I think he's a cool kid. I made a mistake. I didn't realize that it was going to bother him. But as soon as I realized that it bothered him, if I'm a cool guy, I stop. Now, the difference is, a different word is taunting. That's where it's hurtful. Sometimes people use the word, instead of taunting, they say, it's not teasing, Steve. It's too much teasing. Too much teasing, taunting, come up with your own word. But the difference is between real teasing is that I wanted to hurt somebody. I wanted to get you upset. I wanted to humiliate you. I wanted to embarrass you. That was my goal. Oh, sure, I might say it in a funny way, like as a joke, getting people to laugh. But I knew that it wasn't just laughter. Okay? And by the way, I could tease you, but don't you even think about trying it with me. This is a one-way journey. Okay? I tease you. You don't tease me. Once again, it's that power imbalance which makes it bullying. Okay? And then, of course, let's say, for instance, I was with a bunch of friends. And we had a sleepover one day. And I don't know, I drank too much soda or something, and I peed the bed. <gasps> and we're teasing me about it. And I'm like, OK, OK, yeah, I peed the bed. Ha, ha, ha. All right, let it go, let it go. And they say, OK, well, let it go. And do me a favor. Don't say anything when the girls come around. Do me a favor. Don't say anything. That's kind of embarrassing. And you say to me, OK, Steve, I won't say a word. But then as soon as those girls come over, oh, I wonder if anybody peed the bed this weekend, Steve. I'm like, man, I told you not to say anything. Because you are taunting me. That's the difference. I was like, oh, just kidding, Steve. No, I asked you not to do it, and you did it anyway. That's taunting. So when we talk about verbal bullying, What's the difference between kidding around or somebody being too sensitive? One is, it's lighthearted and respectful and sensitive. One is, I'm trying to bother you. And that's why verbal bullying is so much more common. Cyberbullying. Cyber. Cyber man. Basically, it's talking about computers, electronics. It's doing the same thing. Basically, the verbal type of bullying, except it's in text messages and emails or on Facebook. All right? Maybe I threaten you. I'm going to get you after school, and I send a little text message. By the way, if anybody didn't, including myself, please put your cell phone on vibrate or turn it off. Uh -huh. Okay? So that would be the same thing. I'm threatening you. I'm going to kick your butt after school, and I send you a text message. That's the difference. It's a new weapon. Or... Maybe what I can do is I could use digital photography. I take somebody who happens one day in school, because now everybody's got these little cameras on one phone or another, and maybe I bent over to pick something up. Somebody takes a picture of my backside. Then they take it. Maybe you know my shirt was out. Maybe you saw a little bit more of my backside than I really meant for you to, to, to see. But I was just picking up a pencil. Who doesn't drop a pencil? And then somebody takes that picture, puts it on Facebook, and sends it out to everybody. And I'm humiliated. The, talk about that power difference. You got the whole internet. Everybody in the school has saw my butt crack, and I didn't want them to. That's a type of bullying. Okay? Now, kids sometimes make a mistake. They think they're trying to be funny. All right, you take Steve's head, you put it, you know, I'm a white guy, maybe you put it on some big black woman in a bikini, and you set it around, and you think it's funny, and right? Now, maybe even I would laugh, because you know what? Nobody's going to really think that's my body. But sometimes, and especially like in middle school years, 
what happens if they took like a teenage girl and they grabbed a photo of some other teenage girl body, all right, that this very didn't have a lot of clothes on or something, all right? And you put this girl's head on this other body, sends it around, and everybody thinks that this girl actually posed naked for somebody, had pictures taken, and it goes to everybody. Now she's going to go, but that's not my body. That's not my body. But everybody in school is talking about it. Whether it's real or not, that's a type of bullying. And it's hard. Because in the past, it was like, if I wanted to bully you, it was like one-on-one. -on -one. Now I could sit at home in front of my computer on a Saturday night, and I could do all these different different, mean, terrible things, send it out to everybody. What do I do? And does the school have to be involved? Yeah, by the way, by law they do. Because if everybody comes to school on Monday, starts talking about these videos or pictures, or even if it's just the written word, rumor spreading, and it interferes with education, the school has to be involved. And the last type of bullying, relational or social aggression. This is a little different. Instead of me going up to Colleen and being mean to her or threatening her or calling her names, I'm not going to talk to you at all. I'm just going to get you guys to listen to the rumor. Did you hear that Colleen's parents are actually, you know how they got all that money for the new cars? They sold drugs. Did you know that? Now you tell people and you tell people and you tell people and all of a sudden She's like, everybody is talking about her. Did I bully her? I didn't even say a word to her. But I used the power of the group, the social group. See where it says social? Okay? It's the relationships. Wow. I could hurt somebody without even talking to them. Or I could say, hey, we got parties coming up. My birthday party is going to be this Friday, and I'm going to have a party. I'm going to invite everybody in class, but not Scott. Okay? And you know what? I happen to know your birthday's next week and you're having a birthday party. I'll tell you what. Let's invite everybody, but let's not invite Scott, okay? And then you're going to have an Easter party in a few weeks. Let's not invite Scott, okay? That's a type of bullying. Or the silent, the silent treatment. Nobody talk to Scott today, okay? If he comes over to you, just turn your head and walk away. Now, I'm the ringleader, but if I get everybody to agree, it's the power of everybody against Scott. Now, how does a teacher, how does a principal go against this? Did I yell at him? Did I threaten him? Did I break any of his things? Did I call him names? No. We're just not talking to Scott. It makes it really challenging for a teacher or any adult to really figure out how to address this. So we understand this is the type of bullying and how powerful it can be. By the way, another really tricky part, the last part of this, is one of the hardest parts about this is let's say this group right here, these are my friends. These are the people I hang out with. I like them. They let me do stuff with them as long as I do certain things. When they make a mess, I have to be the one who cleans up. All right? When it's the summertime and I'm the only person that's got a pool, we're all great friends. Wintertime comes, I close down the pool. Eh, we don't hang out with Steve too much. That's a different type. I'm kind of like the dog of the group. That's really unhealthy also. What I need to do is find other friends. But what happens is that I'm always the one. Or Steve, you can hang out with us as long as you're mean to Tracy. I want you to go and break her iPad, OK? OK, if you want to be part of this group, you'll go do that. That's a type of bullying also. Any questions up to this point? OK, we'll move on. I'll take a drink first. I'm going to bypass that now. So what do you do? What do you do? This is very tricky, but there are things that I want to talk about. And remember, I said there are different things. We do ultimately want to talk with how do we change the bullying behavior. Let me just stop for a second. Remember before when I was getting all my friends to laugh at the jokes and the insults towards Colleen and Scott? Maybe I like being a very popular funny guy. That's fine. It's just that I can't use my humor to hurt. And I have to learn how to be popular without hurting. I have to learn how to be, have power. Donna, you're the principal of the school. You have power? Sure. You have authority? Yes. That does not mean that she could be abusive to other people. So there's nothing wrong with power and control. It's a question of how you use it. Okay? That's why we have bosses and parents. And that's what we have to do. And you can teach that with young people too. And by 